So if you're watching this video, you probably want to do your PhD as fast as possible and or maybe you know you've already done a couple of years of your PhD and you just finally you want to get it done and get your life back. And I completely understand that and that's why in this video I want to talk about how I managed to do my PhD in three years and write three papers during that time while also working um, full time for two years of that PhD. And I think some of these tips will really help you as well accelerate your PhD progress and finally get it done so you can advance your career and you know become an academic or work in the industry or finally get your life back. So let's get started. If you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkowek and I run Academic English Now, where I help university students and researchers write research papers for high-impact journals. And in this video, I wanted to talk about, you know, how you can accelerate your PhD progress and get it done in three years with published papers. And when I was doing my PhD, you know, I didn't realize at that time that I was actually very efficient and quick about it and, and very good at, uh, about it. It was only later when I started helping other PhD students and, and researchers write papers and, and theses that I realized that you know my PhD experience was perhaps a little bit less common and you know quite smooth in comparison to many other um, PhD students' uh, experiences, right? And that's why, you know, and then a lot of people started asking me as well, you know, so how did you manage to do this? So I wanted to share with you how I did it in three years and managed to write three papers during that time, you know, and also started writing a book which was published one year after I finished my PhD. So I really got a lot of them in a very short space of time. And at the same time, I quite, I, I enjoyed the process. I didn't feel particularly stressed or anything. You know, I didn't suffer from the imposter syndrome or stuff like this. So I think some of these tips will really help you as well. So I think the first really important thing to, to have is to have some passion for your topic and to, to enjoy your topic because, you know, things will get tough but if you can enjoy your topic, then it will be much easier to go through it and you'll be prepared to put in much more work as well because you love your topic so much. And I'm not saying, you know, that you have to be so incredibly passionate about your topic that you love every single bit of it because that's, that's just not true and that's just ridiculous. But, you know, try to find something about your research topic that you're deeply passionate about. Um, try to find something that you enjoy, you know, something that you can kind of fall back on when stuff gets difficult, you know, like sort of a, maybe a bigger purpose, you know, um, that would be the second thing, you know, because if your PhD topic does have some sort of potential bigger purpose impact on society, you can always fall back on that and, and kind of try to picture that and what that might be to help you get it going, right? So that's really the, the first important thing, have some, have some passion, you know? Now, I think the second important thing that is, that is often overlooked is the importance of the supervisor as well. So my supervisor was, was excellent, right? And he was always available and always giving advice and, you know, just generally very helpful, you know? So, you know, you, you really have to consider kind of what supervisor you select. I was just lucky because I had no clue before starting my PhD what supervisor to select, but that's that's an important ingredient because if your supervisor is unavailable, just gives doesn't give you any comments or takes five months to give you comments, then obviously you're going to take much longer and it's going to be much tougher. So so that's the second thing, you know, um, your supervisor and the relationship that you have with your supervisor. Now, the third thing that, I, that really helped me on my journey was discipline, right? And persistence. Like, as, a, as an individual, I've always been very stubborn. And when I get an idea into my head, I'll just like, 
I'll, I'll just keep on digging, you know, and until until I find that idea. And everybody can be telling me that like I'm wrong and you shouldn't do this, but I'll just I'll just continue. I'm just very persistent, you know, and and very disciplined at it as well. And I made another video in here where I talk about, you know, PhD routine and schedule and the importance of discipline, which you might want to check out. But this is this is key, you know, because if your schedule is all over the place, um, then you, you're never going to be able to do stuff. And if you're looking for motivation to start writing, you will never write anything because motivation is this, you know, elusive thing that comes and goes, you know, but really achieving great things is about persistence it's about being relentless it's about being disciplined right that's that's what it takes so you get up every day and whether you want to write or not you just write it and i'm gonna not gonna lie to you like there were many mornings where i'd rather would have stayed in bed than started writing my thesis but i just did it every single day there's, there's no magic to it you just do it. it it's discipline rather than motivation right so that's that's the third thing now, the fourth really important thing is planning, you know, and having a clear, first of all, a clear goal, you know, and priorities. Well, what is it actually that I want to achieve and by when? And then you want to break that down into intermediate goals and map them out on your PhD time frame, you know, onto semesters and then identify the specific actions that you need to take on a, on a monthly, weekly, daily basis and then execute. On those actions so so planning is is key because otherwise if you don't plan and you don't have priorities then you're going to be doing all sorts of random shit that you know you think might help you but it's not actually helping you in any meaningful way you know it kind of feels like work but it's not really helping you in any way get to your get to your goal if you don't plan you're going to be incredibly distracted and and and, and things like that, you know, and it's going to be so much more difficult to maintain the momentum as well because you don't know even where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing and whether you're achieving your goals. So planning is very, very important. Now, the I think it's the fourth or the fifth tip now, um, focus, you know, so important to, to focus, you know. So if you're that kind of person who, you know, I don't know, is constantly on the phone or you know whenever they receive an email they, they check their email box all the time or whenever they receive an email they answer it whenever they get an idea into their head oh i still need to read something so they forget that they were writing and they start reading something you know if you're like that then it's much more difficult to be productive you know what you need to do is is to focus on one task so what i used to do when i was doing my phd i would just close the door to my room I would put my phone on silent or switch it off and and I would just focus on the task at hand. If it was reading, I would just take a load of books that I brought and, and sit in my chair and read them and take notes on them and switch off the internet, switch off everything else so there were no distractions at all, you know. Um, I wouldn't go to the, to the cafeteria or to the office if I didn't have to because then there would be a lot of people wanting to talk to me and vying for my attention, inviting me for coffee or I would be talking to them because I'm quite sociable as well. And then, you know, my focus would be gone, you know. So there's time and place for, for that thing, for socializing, and I did that as well. But, you know, when you want to be working, you want to be focused and do very focused work. So that's another thing. Now, I got lots of account, I don't know if it's the fifth tip or, but the next really important thing is to write, you know. I'm so surprised when, you know, I find out that somebody is in the second or third year of the PhD and they've written like 5,000 words, you know, and they still think they're, they've got this delusional idea that they don't need to, still don't need to write because they haven't finished collecting the results or they don't need to write because they haven't read enough or whatever other reason they've invented for themselves and that's that's a load of nonsense as well like you, you have to you know think about it a phd can be like eighty thousand words you know and you've only got like three or four years to complete it you know that's let's say twenty thousand words a year and that's not counting all the experiments you have to do data analysis uh, the proofreading and revision that you have to do, the time that is going to take your supervisor to revise everything. So if you don't start writing on day one, then you're screwed because then year three will come in and 
you will have zero ability to write because you haven't practiced, so you're not skilled at it. You won't have written much, so you have nothing to show for your work. And that's when the stress kicks in because you've got like a year to finish it and you know, and you start getting stressed and frustrated and, and stuff like this. So what I did was I started writing from day one, you know. I started writing the literature review and then the, when I planned my study, I did the methodology um, chapter and you know by the time I started writing my experiments, uh, by doing my experiments, so you don't write experiments, when I started doing my experiments I had the literature review and the methodology chapter ready, right? So then you know what I needed to do was analyze my data, present the results and finish my thesis, right? So that, that's what you need to do and that's how you develop your writing skills as well, through writing and getting feedback um, on them. Now one last thing that I'd say is absolutely crucial here is, you know, is having an open mind and being open to feedback. So what I've noticed often is that there are, there is this type of a PhD student who kind of, you know, because they are so attached, I suppose, to what they've written or the research ideas, they don't take feedback very well or they think they know better, or they think that the supervisor is attacking them in some way or belittling them or whatever it is, you know. But the truth is that when your supervisor gives you some advice to, for example, restructure your literature review chapter or to consider another type of experiment, you should really, really take it seriously because they're not saying it to give you more work, although sometimes it might seem like it, they're saying it because they're much more experienced than you, you know, and they're saying it because they want you to do your PhD faster so they as a PhD supervisor have easier life as well. So, you know, what, what I did, my tactic was, you know, basically whatever my supervisor suggested I should do, I just did it, you know, and I, I didn't go kind of questioning his reasoning every single time, you know, so when he gave me corrections, and told me how to, you know, what I should write in, in the, how I should restructure, let's say, the literature review. I just did it, you know. I didn't kind of go like, oh, but well, I don't think you're right here because I think it should be structured like this. No, it shouldn't. I mean, your, P, your supervisor is giving you certain feedback and I think you should act on it, right? Don't, don't be defensive or don't kind of argue with your supervisor about feedback, just just do it. Your life will be so much easier, you know, when you just just do it and just apply it and, and treat it as a learning lesson and really, you know, have that mindset where you want to learn from that other person who's so much more experienced and so much better than you. And you're there really on the PhD to learn from your supervisor how to become a, a researcher and how to conduct research and, and write papers. So just take the feedback on board and treat it positively and just, just do it. It will be so much simpler and so much faster. So in this video, you know, I wanted to share with you some of my best tips for how you can do your PhD in three years and publish papers. And if you're really interested in accelerating your PhD progress and being able to write papers, then let's definitely talk because I scheduled some time this week to speak to you one to one um, on a strategy session where we're going to dive deeper to understand what your specific challenges are and what your goals are and then outline a plan that will help you achieve them. And if you're interested in that, the strategy session is completely free and the link is somewhere below this video. 